What's up everyone? My name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer and today I'm going to show you how to create a card component in Framer that will respond to the light or dark mode settings that are configured on the device of the person that is visiting your website. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layout and then I'm going to go to rows, which you can also do by hitting shift R on your keyboard. And then I'm going to drag this over the entire viewport and then I will hit command D to duplicate this row here. And then I'm going to bring this down like that. And then I'm going to take all three of these and I am going to remove the fill. I'm just doing this for spacing purposes. You can go ahead and just start creating the card, but I find it's helpful to have things kind of centered within the viewport. Next, I'm going to go to layout and I'm going to go to columns and then I will drag some columns in here. I'm going to take this one on the left and I'm going to duplicate that, move it over like so. Once I've created those columns, I'm gonna to go to the frame that contains them, and I'm gonna add a stack here, and then I am going to actually remove this frame, and then I am going to set these columns to fill on the width and also fill on the height. And then next, I am going to add 24 pixels of padding, as well as a 24 pixel gap here. Finally, I'm going to take both of these and I'm going to remove the fill. So I just have this one, and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to change the fill of this to white. And then I'm going to set a border radius of 24 pixels. And then let's also add a shadow. So if I go to shadow, see I've got black here. I'm gonna change the opacity to be 5% rather than 25%. And I'm going to set the Y axis to four instead of one, and then the blur to 16. And so you can see I've got this like slight shadow around the bottom of the card. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of text in here. I'm going to add some text. I'll type John Smith here. And then I'm going to change this color to be black. I'm going to change the size to be 20 pixels. Let's make this weight bold and then let's bring in the letter spacing a little bit. I went ahead and pasted an interview from ChatGPT. The next thing I need to do is add a title for this review. So let's duplicate this text layer by holding Option Shift and clicking. And then we'll move this down here. Let's take this headline and call it Best Framer Template Ever. And then I'm going to change the weight of this to semi bold. And then last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to type icon and then let's go to phosphor and we'll drag this in. We'll set the size to be 20 pixels by 20 pixels and then we'll change this to be a star. So I'm just going to type the word star and hit enter and then let's change this to be filled rather than a stroke and then we'll have the color be kind of this like yellow orange like that. I'm going to duplicate this four times. And then I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to add them to a stack. And then let's change the properties of this stack size to fit both content on width and height. And then we'll change the gap to only be six pixels. That way there's a little bit less spacing. Next, I am going to convert this frame to a stack by right clicking on the frame and clicking add stack. And then let's actually remove this frame here. And then you can see everything disappears. So let's go ahead and go back up to columns. We're gonna have this vertically distributed instead of horizontally. And then we will have this start, which means it'll start at the top, not the bottom. Actually add 24 pixels of padding, but on the top and bottom, we're gonna change that to 32 pixels. And then I am going to add a fill here, which I will keep white for now. And then I am going to add a shadow, which will be black, but the opacity will be 5%. And then the Y offset will be four pixels, not one. And then the blur will be 16 pixels. Let's also add a radius here of 24 pixels and then let's left align everything. And then I'm going to go in here to all of these text layers. I'm going to change these to fill the container. And then this review is a bit long, so let's remove that last sentence. And then I'm going to take the star section and I'm going to put that up at the top. 
And then I'm going to take these two things and I'm going to put them into a stack. And let's change the spacing there to only be four pixels. And then we'll have the spacing in all of this be 12 rather than 10. So now we've got a basic review card. The next thing I'm going to do is slightly increase the line height here. And then I'm gonna to go to this row section. I'm gonna change the width to fill and I'm gonna change the height to fit content. That way it won't crop like it was. And then next I am going to add some color styles here. So let's go ahead and go to this white here. Let's add a style and we'll call this card. And then there's this little toggle here. So if I change from light to dark, this is setting the dark mode color. So I'm gonna drag this down from the top and make it a little darker. Let's say like that, and then I'll hit create. And then you can see this color changes to black. So all of a sudden my text isn't visible. So I'm going to select this name, which has this black color, and I'm gonna create a style here. Let's call that primary text and then let's set the dark mode value of this to just a pure white and then i'll hit create and then if i go down here when i go to this color value rather than setting it manually i'll just hit primary text and then it's applied the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create a style called secondary text and then for light mode we'll have this be kind of an off black and then for dark mode, it'll be kind of an off white. And then when I hit create, you'll see that it is a bit of an off black here. And then if I click on this light mode, dark mode toggle, you'll see that the colors respond accordingly. The last thing I need to do is update my shadow to do the same thing. So I am going to go to this color section of the shadow and I'm gonna add a style here and I'm gonna call this card shadow. And then you can see on light mode, it's this off black, but on dark mode, let's have it be an off white and I hit create. And it's hard to see right now. So I am going to go up to my desktop section and I'm going to change the fill to be card as well. And then you can see there's a slight shadow here. And if I toggle between light and dark mode, this responds accordingly. Let's actually publish this. So let's hit update. And then I'm going to click on the domain here. And then you can see that I've got this card and then there's a slight shadow here. If I bring over my system preferences and I set this to light, you can see that the website actually responds accordingly. So this is what your user would see on the web live if they visited your site. This is a really great tool to use whenever you're designing a website. Styles are just a good thing to get in the practice of using rather than manually applying colors. It can be a little bit more work at the front end of a project, but later on, if you're making changes, it's much more easy to do this if you're applying them globally rather than a case by case basis. So to try that out, let's duplicate this twice. Let's remove these two frames on either side. Let's say I wanted to make this white purple instead. Instead of changing all of these, I can go to primary text and then I could drag this over to purple and I could change it like so. I don't actually like that, so let's revert it. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of color styles in Framer, how to create things that will respond to both light and dark mode inputs, and how to use them in your next web project when making a website in Framer. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.